First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh. Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem. Harakakwadash Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world ignorantly calls God, in the name of his son Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I would also like to give a double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught me this truth. And I would also like to say a sincere shalom unto the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four winds of the earth, unto the true servants, the prophets, the men that are prophesying and laboring in this truth and in this doctrine unto you. I say shalom. This is a classic case case of Edomite privilege. All right. And this the lady that you see on the screen wrote a book entitled, uh, what was her book entitled? The White Bonus, all right? And basically, this is Esau revealing themselves, all right? Um, as the scripture says in um, Psalm 64 and 8, they shall um, uh, uh, allow their own tongue to fall on themselves. And she's basically bringing out how her Edomite or so-called white privilege gave her, you know, at least almost $400,000 in financial benefits, all right, through her family. Uh, um, and this is just, you know, at the end of the day, it's just Esau being revealed even more and more. Okay. And it should be a wake up call to you Israelites that Micah 2 and 10, that this is not our rest. This is not, it's, it was never set up to be our rest. It was never set up for us to prosper here. Okay. And it was always built for them. All right. For them to prosper. For them to be on the top, even the lower Edomites. And then this article, it's a kind of lengthy article. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to read some points where she makes a lot of a, a lot of solid points on how her Edomite supremacy has afforded her, you know, the life she lives now. All right, how her forefathers, her fam her her grandfathers were able to, or, yeah, grandfathers were able to get, uh, uh um, you know, decent jobs. You know, back in the uh, 30s, all right, and, and during those times, you know, Israelites were, you know, given the, the you know, the pretty much the, whatever entry level job that was there, they that's the job they, they worked and continue to work, all right? There was no, you know, moving up, moving up the ladder in these jobs, all right? They weren't allowed to purchase property, and so it was a lot of, it's a lot of injustices, basically, that 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 our people um suffered in this country and continue to suffer all right but this the truth is being brought out in these last days all right every the truth is going to be revealed the edomites are going to be revealed everyone's going to be revealed even the wicked of our people but in this instance you got edomites revealing themselves and it really is the lord used esau of course we know that all right to punish us for our wickedness for our iniquities okay and this shows you that, you know, we're still under the curses. All right, so let me read a little bit of this. I'm going to just hit some points that I feel that, you know, are, are you know, pretty important and pretty uh, um, eye-opening and uh, informative also. It says, journalist and author Tracy McMillan did the math. The advantage, advantages she gotten over her life from being white, she estimates from, estimates amount to 300 and seventy-one thousand nine hundred and thirty-four dollars. All right, so like I said, almost four hundred thousand just for her being so-called white. All right, and it, in the article it says she came from a rural area in uh, Michigan. So imagine the Edomite that grew up in a, a big city where, where their family had a little bit of money. All right, maybe a little bit more. Uh, the calculated number of McMillan tallied those benefits and divided them into two categories. A family bonus, which includes money her parents spent on her college tuition, educational loans she got from her grandfather and inheritance, and a social bonuses, which include jobs, apartments, access to credit she's gotten throughout her life. So all these things she's gotten, you know, she feels, and this is her saying it, and this is not us saying it, all right? This is a so-called white woman telling you all the things that she has been afforded because of her Edomite privilege, her so-called white privilege, tuition, education. Yeah, Jay go to college, but Jake is still stuck with uh, uh, um, student loans, educational loans, 
inheritance. Jake ain't Jake really don't got no inheritance. Okay, we you know our family members die and they leave us with a bill. All right, they leave. We gotta you know get GoFundMe to bury family members and all type of shit. Jake out there washing cars and having fish fries to bury their, their family members. Social bonus, jobs, apartments. All right, just they just a, a, a better way to live. Just because they were Edomites, just because they're so called white. The resources and capital she concludes wouldn't have been available to her if it weren't for her race. All right, so she wrote a whole book about this. Um, let me go down. And she talked about how she had hardships and everything, but at the end of the day, she was able to she was able to overcome those, and it didn't in her Edomite privilege did nothing more than than uh, than help that. Okay, and Jake, we overcome hardships, but we used to it. All right. Um, I'll read this. Despite her those hardships, McMillan says financial advantages she experienced because of her race are undeniable. Her grandparents benefit from federal programs that largely excluded black people, allowing them to build wealth that was then passed on to to the next generation. That enabled her parents to pay pay to allowed her parents to help her pay to attend an elite university, which in turn opened doors, excuse me, to employment opportunities. Okay, so that, that's that's plain, all right? Of course, they still got federal programs that, um, you know, uh, uh, Jake, not just black people, so-called black people, Israelites are, are excluded from. But how much more back then in the 20s, 30s, 40s, all right, 50s when, uh, 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 Jake was redlined. Jake couldn't buy own property, okay? And the property that Jake could own, it was in a effed up neighborhood, all right? And that's just one, that's just one as aspect of it. The job, all right? And, and our people, we're the salt of the earth. So any job, any task, we're going to perfect it. We're going to, you know, make, and, and the thing about Jake is we perfect the shit and we make it look easy, okay? Um, let me go down, um, she speaks on her grandfather, and uh, let me see. Um, uh, here it is. As I dug into my family story, every time I started to peel back layers, I thought, would Grandpa have had the money if he wasn't white? Well, no. He became a banker around 1930 when, across the whole United States, there were a quarter of a million bankers, and only 80 of them were black. So Jay couldn't really work in no bank, all right? They wouldn't let niggas around no money, all right? Then he bought a house with a racial a covenant, a clause in many a 20th century, 20th century property deeds that explicitly prohibited black people from owning or occupying real estate, all right? It, this is, is, they did movies on that. There's a movie called The Banker. Uh, it was a good movie where uh, Miss Jake, he, you know... <laughs> He bought property, but he had to buy it in Edomite's name. Or he had to, I forgot how the story went, but he had to maneuver around Esau's laws in order to have, you know, to, to, to purchase property. All right. And this is when, I, this was in California, but in other states, their laws are, I believe their problem were, were way more strict. All right. Uh, let me see. Where was I? Um, oh, yeah. My grandpa on the other side of the family was a mill. A millwright, that's a job that often had ra racially restricted in practice for a long time. He got a job because he worked for his dad who ran the welding business uh, from his dad. My great-grandfather came up from the Ozarks in the early 1900s and got a job in a foundry at a General Motors plant outside of Detroit. Foundries are historically a site of racial segregation because it's the worst most dangerous, poorly paid job in the factory. The black workers were not allowed to get out of those departments. So they were just, they had a, they, they were stuck in those departments. All right. The foundries. All right. Well, where is the hardest work? Okay. It says, uh, you know, it's dangerous work. Okay. And, and while Edomites, they, they, you know, they may have worked in there a little bit, but they were moved to the top. All right. Fa fairly quickly. My grand, great grand, great grandfather was allowed to get out of the department, got some skills and training, and would e would a would and was able eventually to start a business and buy a house with a racial covenant. All right, so they even if you bought a house, you you couldn't sell it to a nigga if you wanted to. 
Okay, they had restrictions on it, and, and that's and that's not by um, that's not by accident. This was this was a part of keeping our people down, and 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 you know, uh, destroying our nation. All right, and, and and yeah, you know, it was but really it's not them. It was really the Most High that 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 you know um, had Esau put his you know a uh, uh, foot on our neck. All right, like I said, it goes back to the curses. All right, because after Jake came out of uh after slavery time jake began to um uh, uh uh rise in society all right jake began to be um run for office become sheriffs and stuff uh um they had begin to get rights and then um i believe i forgot what election it was but uh the tide turned where you know um i believe it was an election where uh I, 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 I vaguely remember, but I remember they had National Guards in the South that were protecting Jake. And they pulled the National Guards back, and Jake started to catch hell. Jake started to catch hell in those Southern states, really all over, but, you know, mainly in the Southern states where they were protected. But back to the um, the lesson or the, 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 the article, this is just showing you the history of, of America, all right, that the, that that you Israelites need to wake up and understand that this place has never been forced. These people have never been forced, all right. We're in the position, all right, that we're in, all right, and, and they've done nothing but make it worse, all right. They they give you this false sense of hope, like you know you can own a house now or you could do this, you could do all these things. They really push that American dream bullshit on our people when they didn't had. You know, uh, 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 um, or th in this lady's instance, a three hundred and seventy thousand dollar head start. They didn't have three hundred years to uh, 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 in all type of programs, all type of benefits to get a head start on us. All right, they'll never. It'll never. At the end of the day, it'll never be a, a level playing field for us in, in in Babylon. That's why we have to flee from this place. You have to flee from this place spiritually first. All right, and then ultimately, if you're a part of that number, part of that elect. You get delivered out of this place because it's going to be destroyed, and it has to be destroyed. All right, for all the wickedness and atrocities, the rape, robbery, and murder that it has done to our people. All right, um, let me see. It's a few more. Um, she goes into um, how Edomites is kind of catching hell now, the middle class. Uh, when you talked about these white advantages uh, people have had, we tend to think of people who are wealthy yet the people who pro people you profile in the book aren't extra ex extraordinarily well off by many standards why did you focus your book on middle white widow my class the white middle and working class uh, let me see you know, there's something else i wanted to read the middle class doesn't have enough wealth to feel comfortable uh they're always trying to game out how they and their family stay taken care of and particularly in society where we where we have allowed the safety net to be excavated. What you're going to see in these coming you know these coming times, these trying times, you're going to see a lot of these Edomites that have been comfortable that that under you know uh, programs, you know their their family has a, a, a some type of wealth or some type of you know um, a, a, a comfort. They're going to begin to get real uncomfortable because these Edomites they not built for the struggle to suffer. Okay. Uh, today, some white people are in the U.S. argue that they are being discriminated against by workplace, diversity programs, affirmative action, and other policies. Yeah, yeah, these Edomites about to start, start catching hell. Let me see. There's a few more. Let me see the idea of the victims now. Yeah, it's a lot in here. It's a pretty good article. I'm not going to go into it no more. I, I think I, you know, read some... Um, some pretty telling, um, you know, uh, uh, um, things from this article already. Let me grab Psalms uh, 64 and 8 because I quoted it earlier. Um, this is Psalm 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So you're going to have more Edomites, not just this lady right here, this author. Uh, uh, um, you're going to have more Edomites revealing things that took place in Edomite history that they that Edomites thought never, no one would never find out. A lot of the, all their dirty laundry is going to be exposed. Okay, Esau. This is the we're living in the last days where Esau is is going to be revealed. 
All right, let me grab this first, uh, Second Thessalonians, uh, Second Thessalonians two. Let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Second, Thess Second Thessalonians two and eight. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of His mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming. The point I want to make is the wicked being revealed. All right, they're going to be revealed for all their wickedness that they've done, mainly to the apple of the Most High Eye, which is your Israelites. All right, you, which consists of your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, hey, a lot of our Latino brothers have caught hell here in America, in Babylon, too. Don't think that they said black workers weren't giving no jobs. They, they wouldn't give no work to Latino workers. Only jobs they would give a, a lot of Latino workers was to work in those fields and pick the fruits and shit. All right, they would give them some jobs in the factories, but they would be right there side by side with, uh, with, with Judah, with the Southern Kingdom. Okay? B barely trying to make it. All right, they weren't selling them no houses. All right, just like just like they weren't selling uh, uh, um, houses, homes to uh, um, to uh, uh, to Judah. All right, but this, like I said, this all goes back to the curses. All right, all this shit, Edomite Esau is a sword of the Most High. All right, let me grab that. Uh, what's that? Psalms nineteen, I believe, uh, which is thy sword. Um, the wicked, which is like, where's that? I think it's 19. Maybe I'm off. Maybe it's 12. Let me look it up real quick. Bear me one second. Psalm 17. Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the Lord put Esau over us in this captivity to rule over us, to to, to treat us like, the, you know, to treat us like they treat us, all right, to, to you know, to make make it hard on us. All right, didn't you know it, Jacob wasn't getting no handouts like they, she said that the programs that were ex, that that Jake was excluded from because they know Esau knows if we were able to get homes, all right, you know, back in the you know twenties, thirties, forties, or whatever, all right, we were able to you know take advantage of these programs. They know we would eventually we be running this thing. <laughs> all right, we would we would you know overtake these overtake them. All right, even though you know this is not our rest. But Esau knows that. To, to, in order to keep us down, they got to keep us at a at a low level. All right. But this goes all back to the curses. Deuteronomy twenty eight one, and it shall come to pass that the Lord, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe and to do all His commandments, which I command thee this day, the Lord thy power will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And that was. The covenant that was the you know we were supposed to be blessed we were supposed to be a blessed nation okay separate from all these heathens but we didn't keep our end of the uh in we didn't keep our end of the deal all right we transgressed the laws of the heavenly father all right we began to worship false idols and go you know uh, uh go off more and more all right doing all kind of matter of wickedness eating all kind of abominations all right giving unto you know the main main thing was giving unto these idols following the ways and the customs of these heathens. That was a part of the curses that the Lord put on us. That's why we in a fucked up situation we are now. All right. Of course, we're coming back. All right. There's a remnant that's coming back and that's coming back to the heritage. But for so long, all right, since his captivity in Babylon, America, we've been, we've been, this is the worst captivity. We've been jacked up. All right. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15. And it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. To observe and to do all these, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, thou, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses are from, from, from 16 all the way to 68 came upon our people and overtook us. All right, I'm going to get a few. Uh, this is Deuteronomy 28, 44. He shall lend to thee and thou shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shall be the tail. And we steal the tail. All right. We don't, you know, 
We don't own any banks. We don't own shit here. We don't run any of these industries. We don't own any of these multi-billion dollar industries that Esau runs. They're still the head because we're under the curses. Okay? All, all these curses. We, 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 you know, what the scriptures say, thou shalt build a house and, and not live in it. Let me see. Is that in here? Um... Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grape thereof. So you got to figure, Jake was out there building homes, all right? Jake was building homes, and they, they, and they couldn't buy one, all right? You know, Jake was probably designing the homes, and they still couldn't buy one, all right? They, they, we, were, we were kept at a low level, all right? A, a low level, and that's because... We were we were alienated from the Heavenly Father. All right. We, you know, Esau gave us, you know, Christianity and Catholicism and all these, you know, going back to the false idols. And what do we do? We we, you know, we our people, you know, took on that Christianity like it, it was our own. All right, but we have a remnant now that's returning back to the Heavenly Father. You have a remnant that is uh uh, uh has eyes to see, to see you know, the eyes to see and understand, all right, where we went off, repent, and the Lord gave us eyes to see who our enemy is, who this devil is, all right, um, gave us his word, these, this, this truth, these prophecies to, um, to, to begin to expose this devil, all right, so the world can see this, who this devil is, um, let me see, um, let me grab this, Proverbs 22 and uh, 7. The rich ruleth over the poor. The borrow, borrower is servant to the lender. All right? And that's, hey, that's that's evident to this day. The rich, all right, the so-called rich, all right, because the Israelites are really rich because we have this wisdom. And wisdom is the true, is true riches. Okay? But carnally, all right, these Edomites are ruling over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. We're the borrower. All right, you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, you want to, you know, uh, 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 um, use a credit card. All right, we have to borrow from this devil. Okay, we're all in, you know, what does it say? You, you um, when you're born, you're, you know, a baby is born and born in the debt. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, I got a scripture in the um. Oh, I had quoted this earlier, Micah 2 and 10. I'll just bring it out real quick. Uh, Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Um, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Depart from this place. Okay, this is not our rest. The Lord is, the, the rest right now is in this truth. All right, in these scriptures. That's where you find rest. And ultimately, the Lord is going to give us rest. All right, where... You know, it, it ain't. And at the end of the day, it ain't about the money. It ain't about the power, and, and it's about the really the peace of mind. When you have a peace of mind that, you know, you 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 don't you know you have that uh, uh that revelations, was it twenty one moment, all right, where you know that you don't you, you know you got tears of joy. You don't got to worry about crying no more. The Lord is gonna wipe away your tears at twenty one. Uh, yeah, the wipe, you know, 21 and 4. And the Most High shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's that, 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 that's that right there in the, is a, uh, a feeling in itself, all right? That, that clear peace of mind where you don't never have to worry about this devil, you know, doing nothing to you, all right? No one ever taking enough, taking anything away from you, all right? Uh, working. Fighting for this, fighting for that, fighting to keep your lights on, and you know, uh, you know, worry about bills, nothing. In this captivity, man, we, we, you know, we're plagued. Our bodies are plagued because we eat, you know, all these abominable foods and you know all these pollutants. But really, our mental, our minds are plagued because it's just never ending. All right, this is never ending. You, you always worrying about some shit. You know, you are worrying about your kids. You, it's just you'll never have a peace of mind. In, in Babylon, in this, in this, in this, uh, uh, under this devil's rule, wherever you go in the world, all right, you can try to flee Babylon and go here and, you know, go to a deserted island. You still got these curses on you, 
All right, you ain't gonna shake these curses. Okay. Um, let me grab this in the apocrypha um, Sirach. Because everything this devil has done, they're gonna, they're gonna. The Lord ain't forgot. All right, the Lord is gonna pay them back. Okay. And that's one thing about this devil. I don't understand, and I don't know, and I don't care. But how, you know how they're going to make it in the kingdom, but that that's that that's something to behold. Cuz I man, these these devils, you know, the elite of these devils, they ain't they they don't they don't they I don't think they've ever done a, a hard day work in their life. So I don't know how they're going to make it a thousand years in the kingdom of heaven with the right under the righteous rulership of Yahweh Shai, okay? And, and you know, the 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 the, the elect ruling over them. But uh back in the uh, Sirach, 10 and 8 because of right unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit the kingdom is translated from one people to another everything this devil has gotten it's you know has gained he's got by deceit all right he's got by um his sword all right uh um you know uh by, by rape robbery and murder all right all by wicked devices all right n n nothing that this devil has in his possession has he got uh honestly all right, but that that moment is coming where Deuteronomy thirty and seven, where all these curses were, are, are going to be put on them. All these things that happen to us are going to happen to them and their families and their children. All right, they 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 ain't going to worry have to worry about no generational wealth. They're going to be have generational slavery. All right, yeah, my my, my they're going to say my my uh, great 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 grandfather was a slave. Okay, <laughs> so. You know, they, they, that's what they got to worry about because all these curses that are put upon amongst us that have been placed upon us by the Heavenly Father, the Lord's going to put on them. Verse, uh, this is Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. All right, so Esau is going to have these curses. All these heathens are going to be cursed. All right. Um, Isaiah. 14 and 1 for the lord will have mercy on jacob and yet will choose israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of jacob and the people shall and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of israel shall possess them in the land for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and shall rule over their oppressors this is a future prophecy in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to rule over them that ruled over us. All right. We're going to take them captives that whose we were captive. We're captive right now. We're in a foreign land, speaking a foreign language, following their ways, their ways and uh, their, their customs and, you know, uh, uh, their, their wicked ways of life. OK, but hey, they're going to follow our righteous customs. OK, they're going to follow our, our, our high holy days. All right, we're going to put hell on them like they put hell on us. All right, um, a few more scriptures. Uh, let me see. Um, of course, I got to get the uh, Revelation 13. All right, uh, Re Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what we're hoping for. All right, we... we you know, we're prisoners of hope because the Lord is a man of his word. The Lord, you know, uh, is a man that he shall not lie. So we know and we trust and believe that this is this, this prophecy is going to come to pass where those that led us into captivity are going to go into captivity. All right. We're going to see the down. We're seeing we're witnessing the downfall of our enemies right now. OK, and it's going to be even sweeter when we see them, uh, uh, you know, in chains, as it says in uh, uh, what is that? Um. Uh, Psalms 148, 148, chains and fetters, uh, 149, 149, um, and 8, uh, verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punish and punishments upon them, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, 
Okay, that, that's the moment. That's the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay, we're waiting on that day where, you know, it says, um, guys, at 30, 30, 33 and 1. They spoiled us. We're going to spoil them. Woe to thee that spoiled us, and thou was not spoiled, and dealt treacherously, and they dealt treacherously, dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. So, hey, what you you reap what you sow, all right? These devils did nothing but harm, you know, physical harm, mental harm to our people. So they, they, they're going to get that payback, all right? They, they lived it up. They, they receive all the benefits uh, of, you know, they, they receive their blessing. That Their blessing was the fatness of the earth. They receive all the benefits in their society and in their in their infrastructure, all right, and you know we're gonna we're gonna receive the benefits in ours. They had their goal. They had their they you know they had their little wicked run, all right, of their kingdom, which you know three hundred or four hundred years, however long Edomites been in power in this last captivity, but it, it's coming to an end. Okay, so uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying unto the elect, and I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Harakakwadash, Shalom.